to welcome everyone to the Town of Lexington Council meeting. This meeting is being held at Town Hall Monday evening, July 10, 2017. This meeting is being broadcast live and will be replayed several times over the next week. I'm Steve McDougal, the Mayor of Lexington. At this time, I would like to introduce you to my fellow council members. To my left is Mayor Pro Tem Hazel Livingston. Good evening. To her left is Council Member Todd Carnes. Hello, everyone. To his left is Council Member Steve Baker. Good evening. To my right is Council Member Kathy Manis. Good evening. To her right is Council Member Ted Stambolitis. Good evening, y'all. And to his right is Council Member Ron Williams. Good evening. At this time, I would like to welcome Pastor Jeff Kersey from Mount Horb United Methodist Church. If you would, please come forward and offer invocation for tonight's meeting. And we appreciate you being here with us. Thank you for hanging in there. Apologize for being a little late tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and Council. And uh, it's also good to be a, uh, a new part of the town as, you, as Mount Horb has become annexed into the city. So it's good to be a uh, part of your deliberations and hopefully all of our uh, future conversations will be all good so, so, <laughs> so, so let's pray together yes our gracious god we thank you that you have um, blessed us in this community so much we are a blessed town and we thank you for that we thank you for these uh, elected officials who have uh, committed themselves to serving uh, this town and these uh, citizens we pray that you would give them wisdom and discernment and guidance and gracious god we pray that you would help us to desire more than anything to do things that would please you that things that you're interested in and that you want us to look out for the interest of your people so god give us courage and also i pray for our community to be safe i pray for our law enforcement uh, men and women and those who are protecting uh, citizens keep them safe our all of our folks that work for the town uh, father god watch over them and and protect them and again may we make decisions that would uh, please you and that we would allow you to move in our city uh, as you want to move through our churches and through our citizens and through our government and we ask all this in the strong name of jesus christ amen and amen amen amen, amen. amen. pastor kersey thank you very much mr mayor if i could yes sir mr baker pastor kersey before you go, yes. just want to uh, say thank you for the concert series that Mount Horeb puts on. You guys do a phenomenal job there. If um, if any of you have not had the opportunity to go to one of those concerts, they do a phenomenal job. And uh, just thank you again. Okay. Thank you. Zach Williams will be our next concert coming up this fall. So uh, rising young artists. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. <coughs> At this time, are there any uh, former military or current military members in the audience tonight? Johnny, if you would, please come forward. Um, <laughs> at this time, if you don't mind, if you would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Johnny, thank you very much for your service and what you do for us here at the town. We really appreciate it. At this time, I'll call the meeting to order and move into deletions on the agenda. I know there is one deletion on the agenda tonight. It is new business item number one. Madam Clerk, new business item number one is deleted. Anything else? Hearing none, we will move right into presentations. Our first presentation tonight is from Ms. Jean Derrick. Is Ms. Jean Derrick here? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Derrick. Please address your name and address for the record. And you have five minutes, please. Jean Pierre and Derek, my place of business is 205 West Main Street, Lexington, South Carolina. And I'm a Richland County resident, actually. But I'm certainly a taxpayer in the town of Lexington, and I'm here, and I won't take five minutes of your time, to ask for a refund of the $31.58 penalty I was charged when I paid 
my business license tax of $631.60, one day late here in Lexington. I don't think, I'm a citizen, I'm glad to see y'all are praying and saying the Pledge of Allegiance, I've never been to the town council, but that's important. And I think that it's a small, petty matter, but I think it's telling about the character of the town. And I've, I'm invested in the town, I like the town, uh, and I, I, I want this to call this to your attention and perhaps it can be tweaked. Um, yeah, I'm a good citizen. Uh, Bill Gorski and I moved the Kugel Metz house over and established it uh, um, last year with a very generous $5,000 grant from y'all, which we appreciate very much. You know, we've, we've got a stake in the town. We're improving it. And I send in a fairly substantial business license tax every year based on my gross proceeds as a lawyer. I've been practicing here in town since 1982. I've been practicing law in the state of South Carolina since um, 1977, 41 years ago. And um, so I generate money. And your business license tax is supposedly due on April 15th. Well, guess what? So is everybody else else's income taxes. And my accountant, Guy Sheely's daughter up in Batesburg, a Lexington County business, uh, didn't get my business license tax return, which I has to have my gross receipts in order to calculate the business license tax to me until April 17th. And I turned it in then and was told that I was one day late. I ought to be paid on the 16th. So what I would suggest, and then I asked that the penalty be waived since it's only one day late. And the clerk politely said I had to address y'all as a council to, d to do that. So, you know, let me ask you, maybe give people like a 10-day grace period? I mean, there's no cost of $31 that was generated from being paid one day late. It's really just a penalty. And I would hope I'm not the kind of taxpayer you'd want to penalize given the circumstances. So maybe, you know, maybe... 15th through the 25th, and then, then start assessing the penalty because you got to pay your people perhaps to go see who's late and hadn't paid. So I would ask for my refund. Thank you. And I would ask that you consider change, expanding that. So you can really, I mean, that that's one small thing, but this is a friendly town. Uh, it's a good place to live. It's it's the fastest growing county in the state, and the town is the heart of the county. And uh, you know y'all are doing a good job, and this is a little matter, but I'm doing. I, I want to be helpful about it too. You know that's something that can be improved on, and I hope y'all will take that opportunity. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Ms. Derrick. Are there any questions? Hearing none. Moving on, we will move into our next presentation tonight from Kimberly Cockrell. Ms. Cockrell is from the community service, has a community service recognition. Welcome, Ms. Cockrell. If you would state your name and address for the record. Yes, sir. My name is Kimberly Cockrell. I live at 112 Bartram Way in Lexington, South Carolina. Thank you. Thank Go right you. ahead. Um, I've stood before you before in April, so all of you know that I'm a victim's advocate by profession. And on the last week of May, we had a situation here in Lexington County that um, was heart-wrenching. It didn't involve a human, but it involved an animal. And um, I'm sure many of you saw it. There was a dog with its foot caught in a coyote trap. It drew a lot of attention. Um, a friend of mine reached out to me, knowing the situation. She reached out to me as well as to a friend of ours named Eldad Hagar, who was a world-renowned dog rescuer, who flew here to West Columbia three years prior to rescue Shaggy out of, from Sonic over by the airport. And during that week, seeing the progress of what was going on, a lot of us reached out for help to, the, to what we thought was those who could do something, um, to those in charge. And not for lack of trying, but we were very unsuccessful. So Thursday evening, I was on the phone with Eldad, and um, he said, Kimberly, you know what, I'm just gonna fly out. So he and his um, girlfriend, Loretta, boarded the Red Eye flight that night from Los Angeles and arrived here in Columbia the next morning. Everybody was very upset. There were a lot of tensions flying with the situation. And um, when he landed, he was met with some information that 
may or may not have been accurate, but he was told that he would be met with some resistance when he arrived um, into Gaston to the, uh, to the site where the dog was. At that point, having been very involved in this, having been very upset, I finally said, that's it. The only person who flew into my mind at that point was Hazel Livingston. Um, we were at our wit's end. All of us who love animals was very upset knowing that this dog was suffering with temperature soaring. And um, I reached out to the one person that I knew that could help at that point. And I called her that morning and the first thing out of my mouth was, Hazel, I need help. And she said, is it about the dog? And I said, yes. And she said, you tell me how I can help you. I proceeded to explain the situation and what was going on. And she said, give me 15 minutes and I'll call you back. She called me back in six. She'd reached out to a council member from Lexington County named Aaron Bergen. And together, these two women facilitated a communication that was incredibly necessary between LDAD and animal control. Had these women not done this, I honestly, in my heart of hearts, do not believe that the situation would have had the same outcome. Because of what Hazel did, LDAD was able to go in with 19 of us who were, two of them were from Los Angeles, the rest were Lexington County residents, including my son and my two nieces, children and residents from that, that neighborhood were able <coughs> to, with those rescuers, with a 400-foot soccer net and 37 seconds, we had Hermione safely. We named her Hermione because the gentleman's home that she had been seeking refuge in, his name was Herman, and we couldn't name a girl <laughs> Herman, so we named her Hermione. Because of this, and because of her help. Hermione is now in Los Angeles. She's lost half of her foot. She did undergo several surgeries that were very painful. Eldad, who owns Hope for Paws, flew here at his expense. He stayed here at a hotel. He stood out, stayed out there for hours on end in, the, in our South Carolina heat, which he's not used to. And then realizing the medical condition of the dog was not able to safely fly her back, he rented a car here and drove back across the country. So he and Loretta and Hermione drove across country. She is now thriving. And in all honesty, as a victim's advocate, I'm used to being the voice for victims when they don't have one. It was very humbling for someone who's not an advocate by profession to step up and do what was right. Hazel Livingston was not only Hermione's voice, but she was Team Hermione's voice. And it's for that that I'm standing in front of you tonight to publicly thank her for her service to our community and to thank her from the bottom of my heart. And the only regret that I have in this whole thing is that because she was in Mississippi, <laughs> while all this was going on, on vacation, she was not able to hug that dog because she's a, she loves her fur babies just like I do. And she was not able to get her hands on her and hug her and realize what she did to the extent that I was. And so it's for that that I thank you from the bottom of my heart and tell you that one of my, one of my sayings is either you're either part of the solution or you're part of the problem. My friend that day, you were part of those, an amazing solution. And so I thank you. It's with that that I have a photo of the exact moment that Eldad laid his hands on Hermione for the first time, and then two photos of her afterwards, after she had one, two surgeries. And so I wanted to present this to you in front of all of your associates and tell you thank you very much and that we love you.
and thank you very much for allowing me to do this. I You're welcome. It, and thank you all for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Member Tim, is there anything you'd like to add? I, I just want to thank you, Kimberly, for all you do for everyone in the community because you put a lot of time and energy working for everybody that is in need. So we do appreciate your leadership in our community and being a citizen of our town too. And we're glad that he's safe and he's okay and or she is safe and okay and looks great. He's doing great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you everyone very much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. At this time I will have a vision plan update for June 2017. The town of Lexington's Ice House Amphitheater was just named the 2017 Municipal Association of South Carolina Achievement Award winner. We're very proud of that and we will go down to Hilton Head uh, in about a week and accept that award from uh, the Municipal Association here in South Carolina. Very proud of that. Our future events include Movies in the Park with a feature presentation of La La Land this Friday. The movie begins at 8.30 p.m. Also, we will welcome Terrence Young Jazz Experience with Mark Rapp on Friday, August 4th. Tickets are $8 each and can be purchased on Everbright or at the Old Mill Brew Pub during normal business hours. Additionally, the Lexington's Midsummer Festival 2017 will take place on Friday, August 25th, featuring Drew Holcomb and the neighbors. The event begins at 5.30 p.m. Parking and admission to the food truck area and local stage are free. Tickets to the 7.30 headliner concert with Drew Holcomb and the neighbors are $12 in advance and $15 the day of the show and can be purchased through the website. Note all tickets to the main stage concert are general admission. For more information or for a full calendar of events for the Ice House Amphitheater, please visit www.icehouseamphitheater.com. Also for this month, the Farmer's Market, the Town of Lexington's Farmer's Market operates every Saturday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. running through September 30th located at the Lexington Square, which is 205 East Main Street. The town of Lexington's Farmer Market uses a community-friendly atmosphere to promote and support and encourage local production while in, in educating citizens on the benefits of eating local, fresh produce, and supporting local artists and certified SC program. For more information about the Farmer's Market, you can contact our downtown venue promoter, Walker Brewer, at 803-358-7275, or visit our webpage at lexsc.com. That is all for the vision plan update for the month of June 2017. At this time, we will move into a traffic update from Mayor Pro Tem Hazel Livingston. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A new right turn lane is under construction at the Lexington Square the Fresh Market site. Anticipate delays and consider alternate routes during this time. Please use extra caution around this area. Phase one of the adaptive traffic signal project is nearing completion. There is an adjustment period that will be ongoing. Work on phase two is expected to begin in October. The bid opening for the one-way pair project will be held on Wednesday, July the 20th at 10 a.m. That's exciting news. The next traffic committee meeting will be Wednesday, August the 9th at 8 a.m. in the third floor conference room of Town Hall. Finally, if you're aware of any traffic issue, unsafe roadway situation, or just a pothole that needs to be repaired, please call 359-1027 and let us know. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. At this time, we will move into public hearings. Speakers are limited to five minutes. Our first public hearing is final reading of an ordinance for sale of municipal property in the Carolina Springs subdivision. Anyone here wish to speak to that? Moving on, final reading of an ordinance granting a five-year municipal tax abatement for Project Plate. Anyone here wish to speak to that? Hearing none, moving on, final reading of an ordinance annexing Lexington County 
tax map number 3500-03-160 located at 565 Corley Mill Road. Anyone here wish to speak to that? Hearing none, final reading of an ordinance annexing Lexington County tax map number 3300-04-012 located at 1118 Old Cherokee Road. Anyone here wish to speak to that? Hearing none, final reading of an ordinance annexing a portion of Lexington County tax map number 3300-04-014, located at 1120 Old Cherokee Road. Anyone here wish to speak to that? Hearing none, final reading of an ordinance annexing Lexington County tax map number 3300-04-033 and 106 located at 665 Old Chapin Road. Anyone here wish to speak to that? Hearing none, final reading of an ordinance and amending the Commercial Corridor Special Overlay District to include Corley Mill Road. Anyone here wish to speak to that? Hearing none, final reading of an ordinance, increasing building permit fees. Anyone here wish to speak to that? Hearing none, and finally, final reading of an ordinance, accepting the title to Duffy Drive. Anyone here wish to speak to that? Hearing none, that concludes our public hearings. We will move right into old business. We will now hear our first item of old business from Council Member Kathy Manis, final reading of an ordinance for sale of municipal property in the Carolina Springs subdivision. Council Member Kathy Manis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. The town has been offered $500 for its interest in the pond and associated land in the Carolina Springs subdivision. Carolina Springs is not located in the town, but is on the north side of US 378 West between Wiseberry Road and St. Peter's Church Road. The pond and land were donated to the town in 2010, but have served no purpose or use for the town, and staff recommends selling the property. It is largely undevelopable due to the presence of wetlands and an SCENG easement. The town will retain its right to sewer easements and the pump station in this area. I make a motion for final reading approval of an ordinance to sell the property for $500. Councilmember Manis makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Councilmember Baker seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Our next item of old business is from Councilmember Ted Stambolitis. Final reading of an ordinance granting a five-year municipal tax abatement to Project Plate. Council Member Ted Stambolitis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Town Council. Town Council is being asked to consider authorizing property tax abatement for a new business moving into town. Authority for such an abatement is found in Section 3, Article 10 of the South Carolina Constitution, as well as 12-37-220 of the South Carolina Code. Subsection 39 of the statute indicates, number 39, the governing body of a municipality may, by ordinance, exempt from municipal ad valorem taxes for not more than five years property located in the municipality, receiving the exemptions from county ad valorem taxes allowed pursuant to items number 32 and number 34 of this subsection. The exemptions referenced in 32 and 34 deal with qualifying incentives for corporate headquarters manufacturing facilities, and job creation, among other qualifiers. The county is considering a similar abatement which allows the town to follow suit. The property consists of approximately three acres at 307 Industrial Drive, bearing the Lexington County tax map number 005-498-05-042. I'd like to make a motion for final reading of an ordinance granting a five-year municipal tax abatement to Project Plate. Council Member Stambolitis makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Councilmember Williams seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Our next item of old business is from Councilmember Todd Carnes. Final reading of an ordinance annexing of Lexington County tax map number 3500-03-160 located at 565 Corley Mill Road. Councilmember Todd Carnes. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. JZP LLC owns 1.6 acres located at 565 Corley Mill Road and has petitioned to annex the property. A dentist office is located on the site. Properties in town near this one are zoned office commercial and protected residential. Corley Mill Road is classified as a collector road. The Planning Commission reviewed this annexation during their June meeting and recommended office commercial zoning for the property and collector road classification for Corley Mill Road. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion for final reading approval. Council Member Carnes makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Mayor Pro Tem makes a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Our next item of old business is from Council Member Ron Williams, final reading of an ordinance annexing Lexington County tax map number 3300-04-102, excuse me, 012, located at 1118 Old Cherokee Road. Council Member Ron Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Lexington County School District 1 owns 37.8 acres located at 1118 Old Cherokee Road and has the tradition to annex the property. New Providence Elementary School is located on the site. Properties in the town this, near this one are zoned limited commercial. Old Cherokee and Old Chapin Roads are both classified as collector roads. Planning Commission reviewed this annexation during the May meeting and recommended the same zoning and road classifications for this property. Um, make a motion for final reading approval. Councilmember Williams makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Yep. Councilmember Stambolita seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Our next item of old business is from Council Member Steve Baker, final reading of an ordinance annexing a portion of Lexington County tax map number 3300-04-014 located at 1120 Old Cherokee Road. Council Member Baker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Old Cherokee Investors LLC owns 20.03 acres located at 1120 Old Cherokee Road and has petitioned to annex a portion of the property. The property is part of the Sterling Bridge subdivision that is currently under construction. Properties in town near this one are zoned limited commercial and protected residential. Old Cherokee Road is classified as a collector road. The Planning Commission reviewed this annexation during their May meeting and recommended protected residential two zoning for the property and collector road classification for Old Cherokee Road. I make a motion, a motion for final reading approval. Council Member Baker makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Mayor Pro Tem seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Our next item of old business is from Mayor Pro Tem Hazel Livingston, final reading of an ordinance annexing Lexington County tax map number 3300-04-041 and 106 located at 665 Old Chapin Road. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sterling Bridge Development LLC owns 31.49 acres on two parcels located at 665 Old Chapin Road and has position, petitioned to annex the property. These parcels are part of the Sterling Bridge subdivision that is currently under construction. Properties in town near these are zoned limited commercial and protected residential. Old Chapin Road is classified as a collector road. The Planning Commission reviewed this annexation during their May meeting and recommended protected residential two zoning for the property and collector road classification for Old Chapin Road. I make a motion for final reading of approval. Mayor Pro Tem makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Councilmember Baker seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Our next item of old business is from Councilmember Kathy Manis. Final reading of an ordinance amending the Commercial Corridor Special Overlay District to include Corley Mill Road. Councilmember Kathy Manis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. During the May Planning Commission meeting, the Commission recommended amending the zoning ordinance to include Corley Mill Road in the town's Commercial Corner Special Overlay District. Properties in this overlay are required to adhere to the town's mm -hmm. architectural and appearance ordinance. I make a motion for final reading approval. Kathy makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. 
Councilmember Williams second the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Our next item of old business is from Council Member Ted Stambolitis, final reading of an ordinance, increasing building permit fees. Council Member Ted Stambolitis. Thank you, Mr. Aaron, Town Council. As part of a budget discussion, it was noted that the town only recoups 45% of the expenditures for planning departments through building permit fees. The industry rule of thumb is that it should be about 75%. Our fees compared to other jurisdictions are about 73% of what the other municipalities are charging. During the June 5th, 2017 work session, a 15% increase with an annual CPI adjustments was discussed. A draft ordinance is attached. Mr. Mayor and Council, I'd like to make a motion for final reading approval of an ordinance increasing building permit fees 15% with annual adjustments based on consumer price index to be approved with a budget each year. Council Member Stambolitis makes a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Council Member Williams seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Everybody got a little shy on that one? That was a long second. Our next item of old business is from Council Member Todd Carnes, final reading of an ordinance accepting the title to Duffy Drive. Council Member Todd Carnes. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In 2015, the town of Lexington secured $130,000 in community development block grant funds to install a sidewalk along Duffy Drive from Hendrick Street to Gibson Road. Because of the proposed sidewalk, because the proposed sidewalk crosses the road several times, the town has proposed to build several speed tables for traffic calming and pedestrian safety. Duffy Drive is currently maintained by Lexington County, which requires an encroachment permit to build the sidewalk and speed tables. After reviewing the permit request, the county will not accept the maintenance and liability of the sidewalk and speed tables constructed in their roadway. Therefore, staff is asking council to consider taking ownership of Duffy Drive, provided the county agrees to resurface the roadway within the next three to five years. Duffy Drive is a well-maintained road and has a low cost history if the town takes over future maintenance responsibilities of this road it is staff's opinion that this road has a low cost of ownership mr. mayor I make a motion for final reading approval of this ordinance accepting the title to Duffy Drive councilmember Collins makes a motion do I have a second second councilmember Stambolita seconds second the motion any further discussion Quick question, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir, Mr. Stambolitis. Uh, I don't remember my jurisdiction. Is this in the town of Lexington, this whole property? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, very good. Thank you. Have a yes, Ms. Maness. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was at a meeting a couple of weeks ago at the National League of Cities, and um, there is a concern that in the budget that is currently before Congress that the community development block grant has been cut out. And that, um, that is a concern of mine and for many cities and towns in the United States. So I hope we can, um, I, I sent Brett a text and I think we've gotten 800, was it 800 and something thousand dollars? Yes, ma'am, it was a lot. A lot that our town has gotten that we have not had to use tax money or any other type of money that we've gotten for our town and it has been cut out of this budget and I am very concerned about that and hope that we can take a look at it next week when we have um, when we meet together as a council and send a letter to our members of Congress about the concern of this block grant being cut out. Absolutely. Any other comments? We have a motion and a second to accept the title to Duffy Drive. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. At this time, we will move into new business. We will start with item number two. Item number one was deleted earlier tonight. Item number two is from council member Steve Baker. First reading of an ordinance, annexing Lexington County tax map, number 54240301, located at 889 South Lake Drive. Council member Steve Baker. Thank you. Realty Properties LLC owns 1.9 acres located at 889 South Lake Drive and has petitioned to annex the property. Circle K is planning to construct a new convenience store on the property. Properties in town near this one are zoned general commercial and industrial. 
South Lake Drive and Glassmaster Roads are both classified as arterial roads. The Planning Commission reviewed this annexation during their June meeting and recommended general commercial zoning for the property. The Commission also recommended arterial road classification for South Lake Drive and recommended changing the classification of Glassmaster Road to a collector road. I make a motion for first reading approval. Councilmember Baker makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Councilmember Stambolitis seconds the motion. Any further discussion? I do have a question, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Mr. Ted Stambolitis. I was looking at the map and I was trying to look at that other intersecting road that goes to South Lake. I think I know where the location is at, but what is that other road? It was cut off at the it's Glassmaster Industrial in South Lake. Okay, so that's right across the street from that other gas station. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, very good. Across and Glassmaster. Circle K, what's their ETA on starting construction and I don't have an answer to that. Okay. But in the next year, I hope, correct? I don't, I don't know that, but yes, probably that's most, most likely that's probably true. They've asked to start the process, but they're not ready to complete the annexation process yet. So I don't okay, so really have any firm time frame from them yet. And thank you for coming and answering that, Mr. John Hanson. And uh, that is going to be a gas station convenience store in the near future, correct? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Hanson. And I believe there's going to be some uh, a deli in there, too. Thank you, Mr. Hanson. <laughs> I don't know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Our next item of new business is from Mayor Pro Tem Hazel Livingston. First reading of an ordinance amending the Town of Lexington Freedom Information Act policy. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The state legislature amended the South Carolina Freedom of Information Act this past session, and the changes were signed into law May the 19th, 2017. Contained in the changes are specified deposit amounts that may be requested before filing larger request as well as before filling excuse me larger request as well as specific rules regarding fees assessed for research council should consider adopting a new freedom of information act policy which incorporates the changes since the policy would reflect either a new fee or change to an existing fee it should be adopted by ordinance attached as a summary of the changes to the act i make a motion of first reading of an ordinance amending the town of lexington's freedom of information act Mayor Pro Tem makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Council Member Williams seconds a motion. Any further discussion? Mr. Poole. Yes, sir. Mr. Williams. I'm sorry, Mayor. Um, it's, it says in here that the, uh, from the MSAC, that we should require skip the fees to equal the commercial rate for producing copies. Um, is it, can, can we, is that about what we're charging already? Yes, sir, that's my understanding. Brad said he was he was checking different places that do that commercially and that we fell about in the middle of what he discussed, what he found. Thank you. Sir. Mr. Mayor, do you mind if- Yes, uh, sir, Mr. Tambolitis. If we get uh, Mr. Uh, Cunningham, our attorney, to explain why this uh, ordinance is adopted, some of the reasoning that we came behind it, uh, if you could, or you have time to talk about it, Mr. Cunningham? Well, the reason that ordinance is necessary is because you're altering or changing or establishing a fee charged by the municipality. That has to be done by ordinance. Uh, but the catalyst for the whole thing is there's been a new, well, I guess an altered version of the Freedom of Information Act passed by the General Assembly in Columbia. Uh, and they structured some... Uh, the fee schedule a certain way and we've got to align with that um, for example um, on a large request you can require 25 percent of the cost of the research up front before you have to do anything we don't have any such provision in our policy now um, it also says that uh, you can charge that only the hourly rate of the employee that uh, performs the research before I think a lot of cities including us just had a rate that they charged a flat rate mm -hmm. what we do um, have been doing since that new law was passed is uh, I've looked around and said okay who is the lowest paid employee 
capable of performing this research and, and have calculated it based on that rate. So we're incorporating those into the policy. Okay, and if I may make a comment, tag on to the, the, uh, our attorney, Mr. Cunningham. Uh, in the past, we've had an excessive amount of requests for freedom of information, uh, a litany of information that would require hours upon hours, not days upon days of research uh, to no avail, just asking for freedom of information for the sole purpose of asking for the information. So I, I think our, our staff was being overburdened with a lot of this information request, which we were fulfilling, but it was costing the town a lot of money. And we felt like it would be necessary to be reimbursed for those fees, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Well, we were getting reimbursed already for uh, similar requests, but uh, the reason this is necessary is because of the change in the state law. We want to okay. be congruent with that. I see. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any other comments? Hearing none, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is adopted. Our next item of new business is from Council Member Kathy Manis, Memorandum of Understanding with Lexington County Health Services District. Council Member Kathy Manis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Terms of a Memorandum of Understanding have been reached for Lexington Medical Center's participation in the Adaptive Traffic Signal System. The proposed agreement is attached and requires council approval. I make a motion for council approval. Kathy makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Council Member Baker seconds the motion. Any other discussion? I found one thing, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Ms. Manners. Um, when I was reading the agreement um, under Lexington's representatives, Randy's name is not correct. So it's got Randy Edward. I think his last name's Edwards. I think that needs to be made correctly. Sure. Any other comments? Hearing none, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Our next item of new business is from Council Member Ted Stambolitis, Boards and Commissions Application. Council Member Ted Stambolitis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Town Council. Mr. Jim Wigglesworth submitted a Boards and Commissions application. Mr. Wigglesworth is a town resident, and on, at the June 5, 2017 work session, Council recommended appointment to the Traffic Committee and see the attached application. It is my privilege to put into motion or make a motion for consideration of appointment for Mr. Jim Wigglesworth. Council Member Stambolides makes a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Council Member Manus seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Mr. Mayor, if I may comment. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Stambolides. Uh, I know Mr. Wilgersworth, and he is a, a wonderful man and a great citizen of the town of Lexington. I think he brings a lot to the table, and I think he would be a valuable member to our boards of commission. So I, it's an honor to have him requested. He has fantastic credentials and uh, would be a big help to this town. Very good. Any other comments? Hearing none, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. At this time, we will hear announcements from Council Member Ron Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We hope everyone is enjoying their summer so far. I know I've seen uh, I know the Castners are playing baseball, I think, today at 530 they had a game. Uh, a lot of baseball tournaments still going on for Dixie U. Um, there are many events to attend in the town, so stay posted on upcoming events by visiting the town's new website at www.lexsc.com. It's the same address, just as we've updated the, the page. Uh, don't forget to visit the town's farmer market every Saturday from 9 to 12 at Lexington Square. Uh, the, as the mayor mentioned earlier, there are two new Ice House Amphitheater concerts coming in August. On August the 4th, we have Terrence Young Jazz Experience, and on August the 25th, we have Drew Holcomb and the neighbors. Council will attend the MASC conference later this month, where we will ho also hold our vision plan retreat. It's always exciting to plan for new projects in Lexington and to hear best practices from other cities in the state. The traffic committee will not meet in July. They will meet again on August the 9th at 8 a.m. in the third floor conference room. Uh, the planning commission will not meet in July. They will meet on August the 23rd. Uh, council will resume their regular scheduled uh, work sessions and uh, council meetings in August 
uh, on August the 7th for the council meeting and work session will be on August the 21st, uh, the same day as the eclipse. Uh, thanks for watching tonight. Hope you guys are enjoying the summer and I hope all those kids that uh, Mr. Hamper challenged are reading their books. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Any other comments or announcements from any other member? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Mr. Baker? I'd just like to acknowledge, recognize everybody uh, that was part of putting the flags up along Main Street for the 4th of July. Um, and just say thank you to everyone that was a part of that as well. We are certainly a town that loves our country, and it was something that I was very proud to see as I was driving down Main Street. So thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'll piggyback on that. Yeah, I Mayor had, Tim. I had a um, nephew that came through this week and had lunch with me, and he has served in the Marines for 23 and a half years and has a son that's serving in the Marines. And he was very impressed with the main street and the way it looked. And he just said he felt humbled coming through the town. And so it kind of meant something to have him come through. And he plans to be in about seven more years. So it was kind of neat just to let him see the downtown and that type of stuff. Very good. Any other comments? Mr. Mayor, if I may. Yes, too. sir. I'd Mr. Like to Ted Stambolidis. Well. Thank you. I'd like to tag on that, too. I did receive a lot of favorable comments about the flags. I'm proud of our town for showing the patriotism and beauty, putting those beautiful red, white, and blues out there. It was uh, quite a privilege and honor, and they look great. Thank you. Yes, sir. Dan, Johnny, thank you all. You all worked uh, diligently to get those up quickly as possible, and we appreciate that. Our pleasure, sir. Um, may yes, question, sir. Question Mr. Todd Uh Unrelated to that, I was wondering, can we give an update do we have any timelines on that traffic lane installation on 378 that's killing our traffic? I know uh, most people don't understand that's, a, that's controlled by the state DOT, state road. It's not really under our jurisdiction per se. But if there's any information available that we could provide, A, to let everyone know we're doing all we can, and when might that go away? Yes, sir. Mr. Brippool. Yes, sir. Um, I can speak to that a little, though. I don't think anybody's going to like what I have to say. Um, the DOT gives those encroachment permits, and they're pretty open-ended. Um, I, I think it's a, like at least six months that they mm -hmm. give them. And we're certainly encouraging that work to be done sooner. As you stated, we don't have a whole lot of control over it. Um, it's a DOT road. They issue the permit. We've certainly, as has been stated in this meeting, uh, previously requested that, that in the future those only be done for night work, um, but that's kind of the boat we're in right now is they've got to finish it and they've got a good long time to do that, but we are certainly encouraging that work to be done sooner. We will not shoot the messenger. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Poole. Yes. Any other comments from any member of council? I'd, I'd just like yes, Ms. Manis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just think we need to make it real clear, Mr. Poole, that we do request that this work be done at night. We do. And in many cases, it has been done at night, and we are very disappointed that this is not being done at night. And so I hope uh, any opportunity you have that you will pass that on to DOT, that um, we are concerned that, that this work is not being done at night and it is, it is hurting the traffic in the town. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I agree. We feel the exact same as council does. Um, we have instructed and had discussions with the PD, with chief, and any time that the police department feels that it's become a safety situation, i.e., you know, when you're backed up multiple intersections back, um, they, they have been instructed to go ahead and shut the work down under public safety. Has the chief had to do that yet? He's yes. done it multiple times. Good. Thank you for that. Yes, ma'am. Any other comments? Hearing none, are there any questions from the news media? No news media here with us tonight. Any public comments regarding tonight's agenda? Anyone here wish to speak on tonight's agenda? Hearing none, that concludes the business for this evening. Thank you for watching the Town of Council meeting for the Town of Lexington. This meeting was held at Town Hall on Monday evening, July 10th, 2017. A recording of this meeting will be aired on the Town's Information Cable Channel 2 several times during the next week. Without objection, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>